In this video, I'm going to show you how to start your table of contents page. I'm not going to design the full thing for you because it could be extremely time consuming, but I'm going to at least get you started. So as you know, you're supposed to be designing for a magazine that is real. So with Rolling Stone, they actually have table of contents page that look very similar every time. So I, I put a part of one on the side here so you can see it. Um, this doesn't mean copy every single table of contents page for all your for your magazine. It just means if they have a certain standard that they go by, use that layout standard. So for theirs, if I go into Google real quick, I'll show you. For theirs, they have images all in a line and then the text all in one line every single time almost. Um, so they have the images here, the text over here. They've got the inside this issue here, and I'm a, you can assume that images are on the side. And then they have this one um, that has the images scattered throughout. So you could do any of these styles. Um, but I'm just going to do <coughs> the one where it's on the side. So go back into InDesign. And um, looking at the assignment description, it says, Your inside cover page should include information about what's inside this issue. It can be a table of contents or a featured article page. Get creative. Page 2 graphics should have one main image and at least one secondary image. Must include information about what appears inside the magazine. So if you're doing like a letter from the editor or something like that, um, it should be, you know, some kind of, something that says, what, you know, on page 2 you'll find this, on page 10 you'll find this, something like this. Um, you can make up the content. It doesn't have to be specific. It could, it, it's whatever you want it to say. I'm just looking for the design. So looking at this design here, this, this takes up a little over a third of the page. And there's also like this black line that goes all the way around. So I'm going to start with those two elements. I'm going to zoom out. Um, all right, so doing the first white area, just going to draw a white line and make sure the background is none and the fill color is white. And then I'm going to add a black line, just like this outline, all the way around the margins and make this a thick and thin line. Zoom in and increase the stroke. Let's see what the other one looks like. It's reverse. That looks good. And I'm going to make space on this side just for photos. Just to remind myself, like, hey, a photo is going to go here and I'll go find those. Or I'm not going to do it in this tutorial, but you can go find photos for this area, maybe even color the boxes um, to remind yourself that something goes there or just keep them in draft mode so you can see the see the X. So I'm going to do the same size photo on these two. Whoops. Um, go up. Let's copy this. Paste. And, you know, according to whatever kind of photo that you find, you can change these sizes. This is just a setting up a template to remind myself, hey, I want to find some photos for that space. I'm going to go all the way to the bleed line on all of them. And I'm going to bring, I'm going to send them to the back. So selecting all of them, I'm going to arrange, hit send to back. So now I have the white area and my area for photos and if you put it in preview mode you can't really see much because there's nothing in them but if you keep it in draft mode you'll keep the the X's going across and now I'm going to add this gray box turn off my outline make the fill black and change my tint 
to a lighter gray, so 10, about 20%. And you can also add another thing here. So see, there's a photo on this one, so I could that would be some Photoshop work to remove the background. So you can have a box there to remind yourself a photo goes there. And on this one, there's a photo that's also, the background has been removed, and it has a text wrap on it going around the body. So I can do something like that to show you how to do the text wrap. So, um, again, having a box here to remind myself a photo goes there. And for the inside area, so stretching across this white area, I'm going to type the brackets inside and find a sans serif font. So I really, I, I don't expect you to just copy a table of contents like I'm doing, but I, it's, it's just easier for me to show you a visual at the same time as designing. So please don't just copy a table of contents page. Use them as inspiration. Arial black. Let's see, Arial narrow is a good sans serif font. So decreasing the horizontal scaling, I can get smaller brackets for that area. I'm going to do red, what I pulled from the cover. Make sure the fill color is black, and I'm going to stretch this using my free transform tool, stretch the text across the line. Keeping this in the white box, it's hard to see, so this is my white box line. i move this over. I went too far. Okay. So with this one, <laughs> that is a text wrap with a, um, a paragraph. And it says the actual article, it has like a subhead, and it has the page number, and then, you know, a little preview of what that article is about. So we t we've talked about text wrap in class before, but I'm going to show you how to do that um, in this case as well. Uh, for this for, for right now, I'm just going to fill this with placeholder text. You go to type, but on yours, I expect to see finished text. So I'll need to find a photo for this area. And I think I, I have something that I've photoshopped out, um, saved in our magazine folder for Agazelia. Let's see. I'm going to have to open that Photoshop file. So I'm going to go into Photoshop and open the Iggy Azalea photo, folder that I have, I mean the picture that I have. And get rid of that nameplate. And I'm going to hit save. And go back into InDesign and place it in that box. And I'm going to increase the size using my free transform tool. And this one has a white background. 
Um, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to have to manually do the text wrap anyway because it's not a round or a square shape. I'm going around her body. So I'm going to send this one behind that black line. Arrange. Send backwards. And it's also command bracket. So do that again. Do it one more time. Let's see. I'm going to use this frame to close it in so it doesn't cover up my cover. And now we need to do a faux text wrap. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing in, on this area. If I turn text wrap on this photo, just like a traditional text wrap, if I turn this on, all it's going to do is move everything to the side that's squared off which isn't what I want. I want it to wrap around her body. <coughs> so to do that, I, I'm going to first turn on the text wrap. And actually, I'm going to do it the other way. I'm going to turn off the text wrap. I'm going to select this, this text box. And I'm going to use my pen tool to add points along the text box. And then I'm going to use my white arrow to adjust those points. So in keeping with the first step, I'm going to turn my pen tool on and add points along the line. And you can always delete or add more points later if, if you don't have enough or if you have too many. And I need those points to be white before I select them. So I need to click off and then click back on so they turn white and then start adjusting my points around her body. And if you need to add a curve, you can always use your convert selection point tool to create handles to, that will allow you to create a curve. These are all straight lines. So to show you what I'm talking about, I will go under pen tool, right click and choose convert direction point tool. And then drag on top of that line, on top of that point, to create handles. And when I create handles, it creates a better curve instead of the jagged points. I'm going to delete this point. So again, go right click, choose delete anchor point, and I'm going to delete that last one. And adjust them a little bit more. So with this one, I didn't even have to Photoshop out the background because it had a white background, so it, it's it's hidden in the back. Um, I just made a faux text wrap over the image itself. And on this rectangle for the inside of this issue, I'm going to add a, a drop shadow so it creates some depth. Okay, so zooming out. There's another black rectangle beneath this one. And there are page numbers and <coughs> excuse me. Um, and subheads and then small little sentences beneath the subheads. You can just set one up, and I'm sorry if you hear the snoring, that is my shih tzu. <laughs> um, you can just set one up and then copy it from there. So letters, rock and roll, <laughs> Q&A, text here. So I'm going to select all these and make it Times New Roman just to get my body copy set. You can always fill in whatever you want later. And then I'm going to make this a <coughs> larger text and bold. You can keep it the same text. You can you can make it a different text, whatever you want. Um, make this one different color. And if you don't want to keep you know doing this over and over again, you can actually copy it and save it. As a character style, hit create new style. And then when you select the new one, you can have that same character style. Use it again.
Alternatively, you can just copy the whole line, hit enter and paste. As for the page numbers, those appear in a separate text box, just so they all stay aligned. And you can just make edits to those and, and line them up to your text and adjust accordingly. You can make it whatever page number you want. You can make it whatever font you want. This is, you know, this is your design. And lastly, for the review, to, to do something like that, that all that is is just another colored box. with no outline and adding another text box so the reviews I can't remember what I used up here this is Arial Narrow okay Arial Narrow Bold and white going to increase the size Add another colored box right here that is black. <coughs> Zoom in. And we can do the brackets again just like they did. And move this over to that area. Bring it to the front. Arrange, bring to front. Might have gone too far with the horizontal scaling, so let's increase that some more. And back up. All right, so this is good enough for now. You can, um, at least it gets the template rolling. And after that, you just start filling in the text, do the same kind of effect here, just a little bit smaller. Keeping in mind, you don't want to go less than, I would say, 9-point font. Um, 10 to 12 is good for body copy, but anything less than that, um, it gets kind of hard to read. So uh, try to keep it around 10 to 12. 9 is okay, depending on the font and the bold and all that kind of stuff. So if I go into preview mode... It's still totally empty, but adding this just in draft mode, it at least reminds me, hey, I want a picture here. 